Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Gibson Mod Shop Update. I'm your host as always, Seabus Brian, and we have a lot to talk about today. First, Gibson yesterday released a new line, sort of, sort of brought back a line called the Gibson Modern Les Paul, well, sorry, the Les Paul Modern Light, the Gibson Les Paul Modern Light. It is a thinner guitar with a belly carve. There we go. It still has the carve on the top, but it does not have a maple cap. Now this, if you look at this, if you look at this close, see this, the mahogany top, okay? And I watched a Gibson video of this release, and it's because it, I couldn't really tell. But yes, it does have the carved top, like it would would if it had the maple cap. Uh, but but it, it does not have a maple cap. So I looked at this guitar, and I thought this looks familiar. This reminds me of they did the Gibson Les Paul special tribute. They had a humbucker and they had a P90, and I haven't sold it in a while. I used to have one. This does not have the carved top, though, but it really reminds me of that other guitar. They are thinner. Well, maybe this, maybe this one isn't as thin. It just doesn't have the maple cap. It doesn't have the belly cut. And then when they sold these, they sold them in four different colors for $900 or $1,000. The new ones over here, they're selling those for $1,500. And I said, why are these basically $500 more. You know, it doesn't have a maple cap. It's got the carve. Okay. They have the same pickups except for the bridge pickup. Uh, these have the 498T and these, the, the special tributes, when they had the humbucker, they had the 490T. Okay, so that's, that's the only difference really you can see besides the carved top. They both have the the uh, dot inlays, both have the same knobs. Now these do have the Grover tuners instead of the, um, the the little button tuners, which I don't I don't like those. Really, you're not gonna show me a, sh a shot of the headstock? Jeez, old Pete's. Okay, well they have the. Here we go. They have the button tuners. You can see there. I don't like the button tuners. So now these new ones they come in. Let's go back to the beginning. Where to begin? The beginning. They have this gold mist satin. There is, if it changes, cardinal red satin. These are satins. And they have matching headstocks. The rose gold satin. So it's, it's almost like the, the new colors that they have on the standards. Inverse green satin. And TV Wheat, which is sort of a, the TV yellow, sort of, but wheat, I guess. And they don't, I, the other thing that they don't have that the Tributes had was the wraparound tailpiece. These actually have a stop bar. And do they have ABR ones? Let's see, do they have ABR ones? Hardware. Do, 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 Nashville. Two pneumatics. Okay. Aluminium. Two, two pneumatics. Now, I was wondering about getting one of these on the show and doing a review. And let me know in the comments which color you think I should try to get. Which color do you want to see in person? Now, in the, the video that I watched for Gibson, they had, they had the gold and they had this rose gold satin. Those were the two colors that they had. Neither one of those impressed me much. Um, I like the red, although a white pickguard on that might have looked better, and the inverse green I like. But let me know in the comments if you think I should get one, and if you do, which color I should get. But let us move on to the next little piece of wonderful information that we have here. Yes, that's the Les Paul Modern Light. Epiphone presents... Kurt Hammett's 1979 Flying V. That's right. They released Kurt Hammett's 
Flying V, which they were trying to sell, or Gibson sold for, what was it, $20,000? So you can get it in purple. There we go. Purple. Now uh, you can get it with, uh, I'm sure that, hold on, that, that'll be in a better close up picture. This is a copy of his 79 Flying V. It's got a harmonica bridge. There we go. Well, harmonica ish bridge. Uh, I got the three knobs set up. Got the Epiphone. Uh, does it have rosewood? Do 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 do. Mahogany. Do 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 do. Fretboard material. Indian laurel. Okay, Indian laurel. I like this purple. It's got the little Kirk Hammett emblem on the, on the headstock with a volute. But don't worry, when I first saw this, I was like, why is it purple? <laughs> Kirk Hammett's guitar is black. It does come in black. This is interesting, I think. And I pondered it. There you can see. Oh, and it comes with a case, which they show the interior of this case with the red red interior. Nice, nice case. They are $1,300, which seems to be the new pricing point for Epiphones, I guess. And they have this little rigmarole here where, you know, Kirk still plays his guitar, original guitar to this day. He used it on nearly, on uh, on all the early Metallica albums, including Kill Em All, Ride On Lightning, blah, 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 blah. For solos, yes. As we, as you may remember from a previous uh, show that I did, I read an article where James Hetfield plays all the guitars, except for the solos, on the albums. He uses Kirk's set up, he uses Kirk's guitars, he uses Kirk's rig, blah, 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 but he's doing all the rhythm parts. Every rhythm part. Kirk Hammett does not play rhythm parts on Metallica albums. Interesting. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. You got the, the black or the purple. Uh, what really excites me about this, though, is since the Flying V... I can't remember if the Flying V came out first for Gibson. No, I think they did Greeny first. But I think this brings us one step closer to an Epiphone Greeny, which I will get. And I will, as long as it's not, as long as there's not something stupid about it, uh, I will get it for review. Uh, what I mean by something stupid is like this this guitar has. Do, 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 do. Gibson USA calibrated T-type pickups. They didn't give them the 70s pickups. And now that I'm thinking about it, let's go back. Shop the Kirk Hammett Gibson collection. And you got the $15,000 Flying V. And it comes with T-type humbuckers. So why the difference? Why does it say Gibson USA calibrated T-types? I don't know. But what I'm trying to say is, in a roundabout way, is if the, when the Epiphone Greeny comes out, if it has something, if it has like Pro Buckers in it, then no, I'm not, I'm not going to get it. If it doesn't have a set of Greenies in it, or maybe Epiphone's version, but I think if I got, if I got one that had Epiphone's version of the Greeny, I would have to get Greenies to compare them, you know? So, but I think we're one step closer to getting the Kirk Hammett Epiphone Greeny, which, as I'm sure you've seen, there are articles where Kirk Hammett is absolutely in love with, with the Epiphone Greeny and thinks it's better than the USA-made Greeny. Whew! Did I not tell you? that we had a lot to talk about today. On top of all that, the reason why you're here, the Gibson Mod Shop Collection, two, four, six, eight, ten guitars. I'm gonna close this stuff because I don't need it anymore, thank you, drive through. Uh, this is what's left over. And that Transgenta, 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 whatever it is. The the ES-339, that's last week's. So one, two, three, four, five. So they lost, they, they lost, I think they kind of lost half of them. 
<laughs> they sold half of them. But let's start at the beginning. It's a good place to start. Fall Spice in a Les Paul Standards 50s. I kind of like this color. Now, I, I want to assure you that I'm looking at these basically for the first time. I haven't gone through all the pictures. Uh, I bring up I bring up the pictures when 11 o'clock rolls around. I bring up the pictures and open up separate things so that they, they don't disappear on me. Uh, so here we go. Let's jump into this. Les Paul Standards 50s Fall Spice. I like the color. It's like a, a blood orange color, sort of. I like the, uh, we, yeah, we got, okay, not witch hot knobs, but we got the black knobs. Goes well with the with the, the blacked out hardware. No poker chip. I really like this, this orange. I'm going to get a little close here, so forgive me. I'm not sure what that's going to show me, but it doesn't seem like it's sparkle or anything. Oh, they gave you, oh, a stinger. Ooh, I like me a stinger. I think this is the first time we've seen a stinger on a natural, uh, a natural back. That is a big stinger too. That's, I'm going to assume that goes all the way up to what? Third, fourth fret? Whoo. With the blacked out tuners. Nice. I'm really kind of liking this. I got to remind myself that $3,200 is, is not, no. Doesn't say it doesn't say standard on the truss rod cover. I wonder. I hope they give that to you. It's got the glue and waffle back tuners. Yeah, I kind of like this color. I'd like to see this in person. The edge is nice, except for that little ding. That's why it's slightly cheaper, maybe. So let's dive into this one and see what we get. Oh, it's from 2020. Standards, 50s, fall spice modifications include. The exclusive custom finish, a black stinger on the back of the headstock, black plastics, Clusen tuners with black keys, and black top hat knobs. It weighs nine pounds. That's a good weight. That's actually a good weight. 50s vintage, obviously. And electronics. Burst Bucker 1 and Burst Bucker 2. I have not tried, well, I have a Burst Bucker 2 in my 59, but it's the neck pickup. So I've never tried it in the bridge. And that was the other thing I was going to say. I'll do that at the end, if I remember. Hopefully. Now nah, i do it now. So those those other, the, the, the modern lights, which we saw earlier, I, I'm wondering, I, I don't like the pickup combinations. And I'm like, wow, look at that. Quick, real quick. I wish Gibson would sell guitars and then give you the option to what pickups you want in them. And that would, of course, you know, that could increase or decrease the price of the guitar, depending on what you want. You know, if you want the Dirty Fingers, it's going to be a little more. If you want Burst Breaker 2 and 3s, it's going to be a little less than the Dirty Fingers, you know, and whatnot. And the EVHs, if they have, if they still have those. Why don't they do that? I think they should do that. Let's see. I think it would be nice if they gave you the option to pick what pickups you like or what pickups you want in there. And they sell them all, well, not all of them, but they sell you know, them separately now anyway. So this one is less, let's see, let me know what you think in, in the comments below. What do you think? You know, would it be nice if Gibson would let you choose what pickups you want in your guitar? Les Paul Custom Bludgeoned Beauty Satone. $5,700. Of course, it's almost six grand because it's a custom and they have, I don't know, magic fingers or something. Now, if this was like actual blood from the artist and it was stuck underneath the, <laughs> stuck underneath the, uh, the, the finish, the top, the lacquer, whatever. Let's look what we got here. We got blacked out hardware. We got the blood, blood, blood spatter what it's called not spatter not splatter spatter thank you dexter we got the black speed knobs you got the multiply binding but the spatter doesn't go over the binding there looks like it goes around the edge though we got a red switch tip and uh, blacked out uh, rhythm and lead interesting i like this 
I don't like the price, but I like it. And it's on the back. Very nice. All the way up the neck. So it's like, where were they hit first? Now I think this was just in the room when someone was bludgeoned. I like the name. <laughs> this is definitely the Halloween guitar, even though it's the day after. Last Ball Custom. Of course, you get the headstock. Did they give us a fancy uh, no, CS? No, no, no CS20066 or something, you know. <laughs> oh, you get locking tuners. Get some Gibson, 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 custom shop. Yeah, I like this. Of course, I, I don't have a white guitar anymore, though. I can just do this on my own. <laughs> Let's Paul Custom, let's dive into this nearly $6,000 guitar. It is a 2020 Les Paul Custom with Bludgeon Beauty sat Satin Finish. Modifications consist of the exclusive custom finish, black hardware, locking Grover tuners, uncovered 496R and 500T pickups, and custom control wiring, ooh, consisting of two volumes with push-pull series parallel, blah, 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 two tones with push-pull master coil splitting and true bypass. So it's basically... Uh, yeah, that's basically wired up like a classic. Did I say it hand-wired? No. Three-way pickup switch, of course. It weighs, woo, nearly ten and a half pounds. Kadoom! Yeah, 496, 49, doesn't say hand-wired anywhere, so I'm guessing it's got the PCB, WKRP board in it, whatever it is. Yeah, I, I like the look of it. Now, do you think... They rarely do this, but white, what about white pickup covers, just like a solid white, you know, and have the blood, the blood spatter on top of those. White pick guard with blood spatter. Hmm. Anyway, that one, that one's not bad. Pricey, but not bad. Next. This, this one, I will admit, I, I saw this picture, of course, bringing up the other pictures, and I thought, that's tempting. I haven't even seen the name of it yet. Les Paul Standards 50s, which I do like the 50s next. Uh, I do like the 50s... Oh, what the humbuckers? Eh, they, they throw different humbuckers in, so I don't know which one it is yet. Les Paul Standards 50s. Midnight Skull Sparkle Blast. Nice. You got the little skull there. $3,200. I think this one might be gone. Yeah, somebody got this. Not not surprising. What does that say? 50s triple A in Midnight Sparkle. Okay. They didn't hide a triple A top underneath this. Look at that. <laughs> the laser beam coming out of the eye. Hitting the switch tip, which is red. Nice. Ooh, I like that. Look at that. Rainbow shimmer sort of thing they got going on there. It is sparkle top. I like the skull. The clear knobs go well. We get a little closer here. We see how much of a multicolored sparkle it is. Clear pickguard. I'm not a fan of clear pickguards. Just don't put one on. You know? Put it in the case. If someone wants to put it on, let them put it on. But come on. I just I don't like the look of them. Although you could, I guess you could get somebody to like do a airbrush picture on there or something. We have blacked out chrome hardware. You got a nice looking neck, thirsty neck. And did they do a full refin? No, that's back. It's red on the back. Okay, I like this back. That's nice looking back. I think the black stinger on this one would have looked better than the, than the other one. And, of course, a little skull on the back. Would have been greatly appreciated. Nevertheless, I like it. Got the blacked out tuners. Of course, there's a little scribby, scribble, scribble, scribble. Would have been better with a black case. Not bad. Not bad. $3,200. Somebody got it. 
It is a 2021 Les Paul Standards 50s Triple A. What is the Triple A? Has a midnight skull sparkle finish, sparkle blast finish. Sorry, modifications consist of the finish: black plastics, clear top hat knobs, clear pick guard, black keystone lucid tuners, and weighs 9.35 pounds. Mm, doesn't say what the burst bucker one and burst bucker two. A set I'd like to try at some point. Although I guess I could put my burst bucker two in the bridge position of another guitar and see how it sounds. I can't remember if it's got a higher output or not than the three. Anyway, next we have an ES-339 figured in Dusty Pine Burst. $3,900, almost four grand. I think we have a greened out logo, maybe. Let's take a look. I like the top. Got the ref black reflector knobs. This all works well. You can see sort of the different color underneath. Maybe a maybe it started off as a burst, maybe, like a smokehouse burst type deal. Maybe. You can kind of see that. I'm guessing full on refin because that's typically what they do with the ES ES guitars. Yeah. Didn't do the neck though, which is fine because it's you know I I when it's such a contrast, this works. You know the the black blends in. Maybe that is maybe that's black. Oh, we got a reddish tinge to it maybe. But that that back is pretty awesome. Look at that. Yeah, I like this one. No, it didn't green it over. It looked like it was greened over from the other picture. It's got, that's got some dancy mother of pearl. That's for sure. Look at that, very nice. Dusty pine burst. I think I would have called this swamp burst, algae burst, <laughs> algae burst. Nice. Let me take a closer look. It still looks like it's got kind of a red tinge to it. Interesting. And you get a nice case. What do we have here? Nearly $4,000 for 2023 ES339 with the dusty pine burst finish. Modifications include the finish. That's it. Just the finish. 7.3 pounds. Comes with a hard shell case. We got the T-Type. No, it's got 57 classics in it. 57 classic and 50 class, 57 classic plus. Another pickup I want to try and hopefully will soon next for all you lefties out there we got a gorgeous blue 1963 sg special reissue i love this color what, what wait wait what was the arctic cobalt cobalt being my favorite blue it is a full-on refin let's go back to this picture yeah that is Gorgeous. Got the wraparound tailpiece. Looks like it might be aged. We got the P90 pickups. Yeah, they gave us some rusty bolts. So people will pay extra for it. I still don't understand it. Black reflector knobs. Is it just me or does it always look like there's more real estate, open real estate, so to speak, on an SG that's left-handed? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It just looks like there's a lot more area. Full on refin. Looks like we got the, uh, I don't know what to call them. The classic uh, tuner pegs that are all connected like that. We'll find out here in a minute. Gold over logo, but don't have the crown. The button, the buttons. I don't like the buttons. Some more rusty screws. Leave the hardware out in the uh, rain for a couple of days. That way we can sell at a premium. <laughs> Still don't understand that. The eh, finish looks like it's got kind of a purple hue to it when they get up close. Is that white? Is that what they're showing us? The white outline there? Interesting. It almost looks like a sparkle top. 
And the case, of course, what is that, a custom case? Huh. 1963 SG Special reissue from 2022. Arctic Cobalt Finish. It weighs 7.55 pounds. Custom Finish Age Nickel Hardware. What do they call that? Hardware, please. Clusen, Clusen Tuners. Okay, well, they're called something else. Strap buttons, too. What's it going to say? One? <laughs> Wrap around bridge. P90s. No push pull pots or anything. Nice. I like that color. Did somebody get it? Let's see. Refresh. Nope, still there. If you're a lefty that likes SGs or a righty that wants to play one upside down, it's still there. Next, what we got left? Three. Oh, I got to hurry. I got to move it along and wrong. Leave it right along. Moving, moving. Ooh. Wow. Again with the clear, clear pick guard, though. Come on. Why? Les Paul Standard 60s. Fire T Burst. $3,000. This has got to be gone. This is too pretty to stick around. No, it's still there. Wow. I really like the color of this one. Look at that. Oh, uh, I kind of see why. Maybe. It's got one of those not completely all flame tops. You know, this whole section over here. And then you get the middle there. I, I still actually, I really like this with the clear knobs. Throw that pick card away. Why bother? Looks like we may have aged hardware. Either that or somebody dropped their uh, somebody dropped their goldfish while they were eating it. <laughs> I like this top. I like this color. And yeah, they didn't do it on the back. Well, okay. Three thousand yeah, dollars. It's got a nice red back. Typical mahogany green. Nothing too special there. Starting to understand why it's still there. That's small standard. Blacked out chrome. Yep, that's and ding. Somebody changed the, the nut out. In a nice case. I really like that color. All right. 2021 Les Paul Standard 60s in Fire T Burst. That's a good color. They should, they should do that color. 9.35 pounds. Aged. Patent applied for custom pickups. Okay, clear top uh, top hat knobs, and that weird clear pickguard. Why? I don't know. Why? And slim taper neck. This is gonna have the sixty ones in it. Oh no! Duh, I just read that it was aged patent applied for custom buckers. Does it say custom buckers over there? It does say custom buckers up there. My apologies. Custom buckers. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm kind of surprised that's still there. Is it really? Should I get it? Hmm. I don't know. Three thousand dollars. Next. This one. I do remember looking at the price of this one and going, "What? <laughs> Why?" We'll get to that. I'm going to keep it covered up there. It's 1958 Les Paul Junior Double Cut Reissue in Silver Burst, which I hear tell. That some people do not like silver bursts. You know, I mean, the whole Adam Jones thing happened. Still kind of is happening, I guess. That this is, I mean, technically this is, what, the aged version of silver burst? Uh, because they start off a different color and they age into the silver, right? I think, look at the size of that pick card. I mean, that just, I don't think that pick guard works on this. It's just taking up way too much space, which you know, it's probably the way, you know, it's supposed to look, you know, historically. But I'm saying with, with the silver burst finish, this just, it seems kind of a negative blank space. Like, well, we forgot to do that part. I wonder what it looks like underneath. It is a full on refin. I hate to make predictions on whether or not Trugley's going to buy something, but just leave that hanging in the air there. Yep. That's a nice looking back. I wonder if that's what the front looks like. 
you I think that the well, if this is historically spec then that's what it looked like. But the older logo, you know, the more cursive looking logo, I think that would have looked better. Eight three one zero three. I guess this is custom. There's a little uh, orange peel going on there in the horn. No custom case. Okay, so 1958 Les Paul Jr. Double Cut reissue in silver burst. Place your bets now on how much it's going to cost. Nope. Nope. A little higher. Nope. Almost there. A little higher. That's right. It is nearly five grand. Well, okay. It's four and a half grand. It's not nearly five grand. That's a little exaggeration there. But it's still $4,500 for a one pickup guitar. What the hell, man? Come on. And it's not, <laughs> it doesn't have a maple cap. You know, it's it's a solid piece of mahogany, maybe. We don't know. It may be four piece, five piece. With one P90. I'm assuming it's a P90. Let's look into this. It's 2023, 1958. Les Paul Junior Double Cut Reissue. Silver Burst Finish. It has modifications include Sidewinder P90H pickup. Master volume with push pull series parallel switch master tone with push pull coil split. What the heck? Good lord. I mean, you give it one pickup to simplify it, to make it a simplified guitar. This is what it sounds like. There we go. Boom. Give me a volume knob, and that's all I need. You know, maybe a tone knob. Okay, fine. But good lord. Push pull pots on, on both of them. Black gnarled knobs, Grover strap locks. It weighs 7.15 pounds, not heavy at all because there's not a lot there. You know? Sidewinder P90H. I'm not familiar. Still, four and a half thousand dollars for that. Okay. <laughs> Did somebody get it? Let's see. No, it's still there. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Next. <laughs> it's going to be a long one. We just passed the 33-33 mark. I like this color. I see indigo flame top. This is like maybe what a blueberry burst or blue. Yeah, is that what they called? Blueberry burst, the new ones? That kind of went a little wrong, maybe. Les Paul Standards 50s and I see indigo flame top. We got the ambered over knobs, which are always pretty, I think. Maybe it's, uh, yeah, look at look at that look at that purple that's there. You can see it. I think this is a a, a blueberry burst that kind of went wrong. See if the back is. I think the back on the blueberry burst is, uh, well, blue. This got natural back, so maybe they didn't do it. Look at that back though. Very nice. Ooh, very nice natural looking pack. I like that. I like that. I wonder if it's a natural neck. Is that eye blued? <laughs> they blew over the eye. I dot on uh, the eye dot. I'm sure that has a name. The dot over the eye. I'm sure it has a name. This is a nice looking guitar. I like this. $3,200. Somebody got it. Not surprising. 2022. 2022. So, yeah, I guess it couldn't be one of those. Standards 50s has an icy indigo flame top finish. Modifications consist of the exclusive custom finish with natural satin back and satin finished headstock. Custom Bucker Alnico 3 pickups with nickel covers. Grover tuners. No pickguard. Amber knobs. 9.7 pounds. That's a good weight. A little on the heavy side. But not bad. They, it's both of them are Alnico 3 Custom Buckers. That is not surprising that somebody picked that one up. That's a good one. And we only got two more left. Thank you for sticking around whoever decided to still stick around 
and listen to this drivel. <laughs> we have a 70s Flying V in copper metallic. Uh. I like this color. Okay. Yeah. This is a little darker than that orange. Well, it's a lot darker than that orange they had at Halloween. But we have Multiply Pickguard. We got the Witch Hat Knobs. Blacked out hardware. Open coiled or um, open pickups. They're uncovered. There we go. Uncovered. We got the dot inlays. Nice. I think this orange probably dances a little bit in the light. Look at that. I think so, especially with that look of the, the headstock in the first photo. Yeah, look at that. I think the Gibson logo should have been oranged, filled in, oranged, coppered, whatever. I like the black tuner pegs. Very nice. Oops. Yeah, I'd like to see this guitar in person. Somebody got it. Not surprising. $2,900. Custom. Or, sorry, custom. Why did the word custom just flew out of my mouth when I saw the word collection? It is a 2022 70s Flying V copper metallic finish. Modifications include the finish, uncovered burst bucker, two pickups, black chrome hardware, and witch hot knobs. It weighs seven and a half pounds. Not bad at all. Two burst buckers, though. I wonder why they decided to go that route. Two of the same pickup. Hmm. That would be interesting. I should try that. Do I have two? I have two burst bucker threes. I don't feel like tearing apart the guitar, though, to get to them. Both of them. And last, and certainly least, less Paul Standard's 50s in Grape Berry Burst, which... Have we seen this before? I think we've seen this color before. $3,100. Somebody got it. I like it so far. I think they left off the sparkle in the name. Look at that. That is definitely a sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle. Gold. Gold uh, top hat knobs. Blah, blah, blah. Goes well with the cream plastics. Thank goodness they didn't put a pick guard on it. Especially one of those clear ones. Looks like it's got a nice looking... Uh, fretboard. Why do fretboards always come like when you buy a guitar, a, a brand new guitar? Fretboards they always come to you thirsty as hell. Why? Why do they not condition them there? Maybe they, oh, it's a black back. Why don't they condition them there at the at the? Oh, that's not black. It's red. I, I'm going to finish the sentence. Why don't they? Why don't they condition the fretboards there at the factory? There we go. Because I don't want to. Good answer. That is that is a dark back, but it's got like a red tinge to it. I like it. I like it a lot. Very nice. Somebody got lucky. I'm surprised they left the word sparkle out of the name, though. That is a good guitar. I understand why somebody got that. $3,100. 2021 Les Paul Standards 50s Grape Berry Burst. Ooh. Modification consists of the finish. Dark tobacco back. See? I knew it. Burst Bucker 1 in the neck pickup. Burst Bucker 61 in the bridge pickup. No pick guard. 9 pounds. That's a good weight. That's a good weight. Uh, I like an 8.5, 9 pound guitar. Yeah. Just, I mean, that, to me, personally, that, that has nothing to do with, like, tonality or anything. It's just the weight of it hanging on your neck. <laughs> it's, it's just a lot better when it doesn't weigh so much. So, am I missing anything? I don't think I'm missing anything. I think I've reached the end. <laughs> I think I've reached the end of my mind. <laughs> what do I do next? Oh, yes. Pick my favorite. Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. I, this week, see that orange is really nice. I really like that one. The custom, overpriced for what it is. Well, of course, it's custom. I, yeah, I, uh, I really like that purple one, but I, I don't know why. 
it, it's it's silly, but I like this fire T burst. I like the way that it looks. I like this guitar. This is my favorite guitar of this week. So there we go. Thank you so much for joining me. This was this is a long one. It's gonna go up to forty two minutes, I think. It's forty one now. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Join the other 179 people that have subscribed to my channel. I do a show like this every week. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. I thought this one was pretty good, actually. <laughs> we get a nice look at these guitars. And I have other videos that you can check out. I got songs that are coming out. I, I, I swear to you, they're coming out. My album is being worked on. The process has slowed a little bit. I had a little bit of a hitch in my in my personal life. <laughs> but it's getting there. We're getting there. I'm getting there. I'm the only one. Somebody said, well, why don't... Somebody left a comment in one of the other videos. Like, we never ever see the other members of the of, of Sanitarium, your rock band, Sanitarium. That's because I'm the only member. I'm trying to get other members and, and, and failing miserably at it. So, yes, I when you hear my songs, I play all the instruments. Uh... Kind of like Prince, but in a not-so-talented way with most of the instruments. I'm a guitar player, and I'm rambling. So, thank you very much for tuning in. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that. SanitariumRockBand.com uh, and, and as always, as always, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much, and as always, rock on.